So it's really early. The sun is just starting to come up. And the reason I'm up so early today is because the freaking ceiling fell down on me last night. Yesterday I was working on a video on how to repair damaged drywall and one of the things I was doing was repairing a patch in the ceiling where they had put a patch up to fix supposedly a previous leak but hadn't done a great job of finishing it off so it blended in with the rest of the ceiling. Now while I was doing that, the whole ceiling caved in on me. Um, yeah, so it was a little upsetting. Not only did the ceiling cave in on me, but it was pretty obvious that the person who had done the repair did the repair to hide the fact that the leak was still there. The reason I know that they were trying to hide the leak was because the part of the ceiling that fell down, what was left up above was a piece of plastic trash bag. So what they had done is they had put a tr plastic trash bag underneath the leaking area and then just closed up the ceiling, hoping that the trash bag would catch the water and that it would never actually damage the ceiling. We wouldn't notice that it happened. While that's frustrating, it's something homeowners have to deal with, so we will fix this. Um, right now, I'm not sure exactly how extensive the damage is, so the first thing I'm gonna have to do is open up the ceiling and get a better look. It looks like the damage is pretty substantial. The joists themselves look okay, but the subfloor that's sitting underneath the tile is rotted away, at least in a pretty big section up here. So I'll cut away this to the studs and open it up a little wider so I can get a better look to see how bad the subfloor damage is. My goal is to be able to fix this from below because to rip out the entire tile upstairs and redo the tiling, well that's just an expensive repair that we're just not able to do right now. So I'm gonna have to find a temporary fix to shore this up that will last until we can redo the upstairs bathroom floor. And the damage underneath is pretty bad. So I'm gonna have to think about how I'm gonna fix this a little bit, but first let me show you what there is here. The subfloor is pretty rotted out. Now I was able to cut back the drywall to where the subfloor feels more intact, but I am dealing with a couple of things. I'm dealing with a heating pipe here and with a drainage pipe here as well. What we're seeing in here is this is the corner where the shower pan is. So this has been reinforced and this piece of wood feels pretty good. Um, this is the edge of the tile. And the problem actually was there is a hole here where they used, instead of silicone, the harder uh, adhesive, the type that you use to glue something down like a toilet before you put the soft silicone around it. And that cracked and that allowed water to keep dripping through. So the next thing I'm gonna to have to do is I'm going to have to cut out all this rotted board and see how bad it looks underneath. Another challenge is over here is a giant jacuzzi tub. So I'm worried a little bit about the bracing for that as well. I used an oscillating saw to cut as much of the rotten subfloor out as I possibly could. And the damage was pretty bad, but it doesn't look like it's gonna be catastrophic. At some point, I definitely will have to redo the upstairs bathroom floor, and when I do that, I'll replace the entire subfloor. But for the most part, everything looks okay. Um, this right here is a beam. It's a little rotted, but it's not rotted all the way through. That, and this is just really holding up the small wall between the shower and where the jacuzzi tub. All the structure under the jacuzzi tub seems good. Uh, the board is fine. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna get a new piece of subfloor, I'm gonna put it up uh, against the bottom, and I'm gonna reinforce it with a two by four cross beam just to make sure it can support the load. The main reason is I can see the edge of the cement for where the um, tile goes, 
and I got a feeling this is gonna crack over time. So if people keep walking on this without support, this may crack, but otherwise everything looks really good. So I think if I can support this all straight and um, hold it up, then I have a good chance of just being able to repair this, close it up, and then actually fix the problem upstairs, which caused the whole leak. I've cleaned out all the old rotted subfloor and I've cut out a piece of new subfloor to match and I've pushed this into place. Now, this is not structural and won't hold anything up. It's just kind of filling the hole. So I'm gonna have to add some cleats and a cross beam in order to support the weight. So I'm just gonna make these out of a two by four, which I already have up here. I'm gonna push them up into the ceiling and then I'm gonna screw it into place. So now I'm just gonna repeat that on the other side and this will provide some structural support on the edges, one on the other side, and then I'm gonna put one right down the middle. So I couldn't record this, but I do now have all the bracing installed. It was a little tricky to keep the camera close by and to drive all these screws in because of the limited amount of space that there was to work in. Plus this hot water pipe, which kept burning me and this uh, waste pipe was also in the way. So that's all done now. The next step is to close up the wall once I finish the leak upstairs and stop that from happening. And to do that, I'll need to screw up a new piece of drywall. That is something that there is nothing to screw into right now. So to attach the drywall, we're going to do a process called furring and put in some furring strips, which is something to attach the drywall to. Now I looked this up. I had no idea what furring meant, but I've heard the term used quite a bit. All it means is the process of putting a backing up. It's a term that came out of Europe. You can look it up yourself. It's somewhat interesting. Also, the boards typically used are called furrings in Europe. So I'm going to make makeshift um, furring strips. So what I have is I had some leftover um, 1x3 that fits perfectly underneath the 2x4 that I used for the bracing. And I'm just going to span this between the gap. And now I'm going to screw these into place and this will give me something to attach the drywall too. I'll also put some one by fours across the middle and then I can actually secure with, with drywall screws a new piece of drywall all the way around. I'm just gonna go ahead now and secure those side furring strips uh, with a little overlap so they can screw the drywall in and I'm just going to do this with one and a quarter inch drywall screws so that they don't penetrate too far into this cavity. All the furring strips are now in place and I have an edge on all four sides to attach the new piece of drywall. Now before I do that, I'm going to fix the leak from the upstairs bathroom that caused all these problems so that we can keep an eye on it and make sure it's not still leaking before I close this all up again. There's no real easy fix to this um, to fill the cavity. So what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to clean out all the old caulking, vacuum it up, and I'm going to try to pack as much sealant and silicone down into the gap as I can so that it provides a little structure for when I put the waterproofing bead across the top. So what I'm trying to do right now is I'm actually trying to push the sealant down into that crack. I know it looks messy, but it's really the only way I can get, the, get it down there. So even though it went on pretty messy, it cleans up while it's wet pretty easily with just a damp cloth. So this first layer that I put in was a uh, sealant. This will get harder and hopefully fill the cracks. I'm going to follow it up with one more layer of the sealant once this dries and contracts a little bit. And then I'll put a final layer of uh, silicone over the top of that. 
The last step on this part was to fill in the crack with uh, silicone. We use a sanded silicone to make it look a little bit more like grout and try to blend it into the tile. Once we clean up the floor a little bit, this should look pretty good, but then again, we're gonna redo this bathroom anyway, so this is just temporary until we can get a new floor put down here. I cut a piece of drywall to fit this hole, and I pushed it up against the fairing strips up there, and now it just needs to be screwed in place. The new piece of drywall is all screwed in, so the next step is to make everything look nice. I'm going to start by filling in the cracks with some joint compound. Now that there's a good amount of joint compound up on the ceiling in the joints, it's time to tape them. And you know, want to make sure you get it pretty good so the tape sticks, and for good luck, maybe get a little bit in your hair as well. Just gonna run the knife over this to get it flat. And the final step is just to put a little bit more mud over the top of the tape to seal it in place. So I know it looks kind of sloppy right now because the edges are still kind of uneven, but we'll let that dry, we'll smooth it out, and then we'll feather it all into the existing wall. I'd like to say I made this mess to show you how to fix it, but the reality is I am just really bad at taping, especially when it's upside down on the ceiling. Uh, I just make a mess of it. It didn't help that even after I put the patch in, the drywall wasn't completely smooth, so there were some divots where the patch was a little bit lower than the surrounding area. But the worst thing you can do at this point is not fix it. If you go ahead and paint, this is always gonna look bad. So I'm gonna fix this. I'm a lot better at covering up my bad work than I am at fixing it in the first place. So the first thing I'm gonna do is scrape down any large edges with a knife. <laughs> Now that that's done, the best thing I can do is sand, and sand it until it's smooth. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but I don't want all these bubbles and all these ridges. I want to make it as smooth as possible so that when I do the next coat, it slides over much easier and doesn't go kind of grinding on, which will just make more bumps, more bubbles. Now, I'm going to do this pretty quickly, but I did another video on how to skim coat and how to fix damaged drywall. That will show you in more detail. I'll link that one over here. So if you want to take a look at that. In the meantime, let's get to sanding. I know it can be kind of hard to see with the white on white, but here's an idea of what it looks like currently after sanding. You can see there's still a bunch of big chunks, but it's smoother than it was, and I made sure that I did not take all the compound off of the tape so that the tape just continues to stick. Now it's time to put up the second coat, and my goal is to get this done in three coats, but again, sometimes it takes me four. This one's going to be a much wider coat to try to fill in the middle and also to start feathering these edges out into the rest of the ceiling. I'm going to put it on real liberally to start.
Now that I got the second coat up on the ceiling, it's time to skim it off. And the way I'll do this is just go lightly over it with the taping knife, putting pressure on one side. And what happens when you put pressure on one side, it will leave a line like this. Then when you go over it the second time, a little bit further in, you do the same thing. And now that line starts to disappear and it makes one further out. You can go across the whole ceiling, making it nice and smooth. If you get a couple of small ridges, no big deal. We'll be able to cut them down before the next step. The key on this step though is that we do want to try to get the ceiling as smooth as possible. We want to make sure that we cover above and beyond the tape line so it starts to feather in the ceiling. And we also want to make sure that we don't take so much off that the tape is showing again. Now using a bigger taping knife will help a lot. The reason is it covers more of an area and it helps to level things out. If you use a smaller one, you're gonna get a lot more lines and a lot more unevenness. So try to use the biggest taping knife that you can. So coat two is dry, it's looking pretty good. Um, not perfect yet, so we'll definitely need to do a third coat, but I'm gonna follow the same process of scraping down these lines and then um, sanding over and then we'll put the next coat on. This is gonna be the third and final coat. For this coat, I'm gonna go in a different direction than I have in the past. This is to even everything out and make sure there's no wavery lines on the ceiling. Um, also, since this is a very thin coat, you wanna make sure that you take the Joy Compound and you water it down a little bit, um, just, just enough to make it a little bit smoother going on. When you're doing the taping, you can use just straight out of the bucket, but for this, you definitely wanna make sure that it's a little lighter so that it goes on smoother and just fills in the last bits of scratches and cracks that are left in the uh, coating. Well that's pretty much it. I'm gonna let this final coat dry and then I'm just gonna do a very quick sand almost just to buff out the last couple of scratches in the coating and then it's ready for primer and paint. The third coat is dry and sanded. Unfortunately I did not videotape the sanding so I don't know if I have any way to prove it to you but let's just say it's sanded and everything is nice and smooth and it's ready for primer. So we'll just take a quick look at it and then we'll put the primer and the paint on and we're done with this project until the next thing falls down and then that will be Drywall, take three. So now that the paint is done and it blends into the rest of the ceiling, you don't even notice that there used to be a hole here. So this whole section of the ceiling is done and we are ready to get back to some other renovation projects. Right buddy? How about your playroom? You gonna do your playroom next? <laughs> we took our time with a difficult problem. We had a pretty significant leak and damage to the ceiling, but we fixed it. We repaired the drywall, everything looks good, it blends into the existing ceiling again, so this project is done. 
If you like this video and you want to see more, please subscribe to our channel and hit the like button, or even better yet, hit that little bell icon and we'll let you know whenever a new video comes out. So until next time, I'm going to go look for the baby. Thanks for watching. Good job. High five.